Welcome back to Berserk! When we last left off, Farnese and Casca had wandered off into the wilderness, and they had run into the trolls who had apparently been impregnating women who then exploded into troll babies. As the image of these women exploding into the troll babies becomes too much to bear, Farnese lets out a shriek, catching the attention of all of the trolls. Farnese thinks of how she could just lay down and sleep. She would never see this sight again. And then Casca starts to walk, and Farnese presses her back onto Casca, telling her that she can't. She must stay behind. Farnese quietly closes her eyes and frantically swings her dagger, cutting the fingers off of the closest troll. She tells herself that this is it. Because she is so weak, she won't be able to do a thing. This is her punishment. One of the trolls grabs a pitchfork and smacks the dagger out of Farnese's hand. And Farnese says that the silver mail won't even protect against human farm tools. She braces herself to be stabbed, but before the troll can, several bolts fire into the side of its head. Everyone, including the trolls, stop to look, and Guts is standing there with his hand on the lever telling everyone, I'm sorry for the wait. The trolls all start to scream, and Guts starts to pull the crank and unloads another clip of bolts into all of the trolls. He then calmly walks over, reloading, asking if they're okay. While Casca isn't happy that Guts is there, Farnese shouts, Yes! The relief of being saved sets in and Farnese's knees give out. She quickly jumps back up asking where is Serpico, and Guts tells her that he is wounded, though it's not critical. I did make a promise that I would bring you back. Shirke shouts that that is just reckless! There's no way that you would be able to stop them without magic! And Guts stares at her group of trolls and says, I can handle this. And that's when she understands that, yes, he can. Guts tells Farnese that he's entrusted Casca's care to her, and she's been a big help so far. Farnese's eyes begin to water, and then she wipes away the tears, telling everyone, come along! Guts tosses Ishidora a patch of explosives that says, once the fuse is lit, count to three and throw. You're gonna have to protect the rear and make sure none of the trolls get by. Ishidora tries to say hang on, but Guts tells him, there's no time for pointless babbling. If you're carrying a weapon, then even a kid is a legitimate fighting power on the battlefield. You've been entrusted with this duty because you can be trusted. Try to carry the burden. Ishidora laughs and shouts, you got it! I'll be cool and protect the women. Once the cave is cleared out, Guts looks at the trolls and he smiles, shouting, It's time to begin! Guts winds the lever up on his arm and he releases the bolts, each hitting the trolls in their faces. As the clips run out, more and more trolls come out, and Guts says that it's been a while since he's been on a killing spree. No, this'll be a good old massacre. As he reaches, he grips the handle of his sword and he holds out the massive blade above all of the trolls. Up ahead, some of the trolls begin to crawl out of the holes in the caves towards the women and the children. Ishidoro takes the explosives and lights the fuse off of his dagger, and then he throws it into the trolls' faces. As the explosives go off, it scares the trolls and they retreat. Ishidoro looks back at Shirke and says, Come on, we got to keep moving. And Evelaria says, That is not what she was expecting. The girls begin to move, and as Farnese holds Casca's hand, Casca trips and falls to the ground. Without even thinking, Farnese takes her dagger and stabs the creature in the eye. Farnese looks at her bloody dagger and says, This time I didn't faint. It's because that there's someone weaker than me, and that weaker person supported me. Are the weak ones that I've oppressed now going to be the ones that save me? Back with Guts, bits and pieces of the trolls cover the walls, while Guts tears into the groups. The more he swings, the better it feels. Not having someone to worry about swinging with no regard to the woes around. Unleashing all the savagery inside. It feels good. Back with the villager, Shirke senses a group of trolls is waiting to ambush them, and says that there are many for her to distract. Then Shirke senses something else, a shadow, and says that whatever it is, it's moving very fast towards them. The shadow runs to the first group in front and cuts through them, leaping over everyone towards the back. Just then, the heads of the trolls in the back are sliced off, and Ishidora asks, What the hell was that? Puck watches the shadow fade and says that that was. But back with Guts, he takes a deep breath and he pulls a broken spear tip from his arm, telling them, It's about time. He then feels a pulse and his brand begins to bleed. His eyes widen and he hears a shuffling from his satchel. Inside is the behelot. And then Guts looks at all of the blood and the troll parts scattered around at his feet. Up ahead, Shirke tells everyone that they're almost out. They just have a little further to go. However, Casca stops and cries out, grabbing her chest. Shirke knows that her brand is bleeding. And Shirke quickly makes a connection with Guts, asking what is happening back there. But Guts doesn't respond. And the bloody wake of troll guts, the chunks of flesh begin to come off forming a body and face. And then she appears, slain. Guts watches and slain says that it's been a long time since she inhabited a body, although troll intestines are a bit lacking as a host. Without thinking, Guts yells as he charges towards her with his sword ready. And as he swings, she moves back. Guts ends up falling face first into the bloody waters at her feet. She picks him up and says that she wanted to meet him. Back in the cave, the tower, she can always feel the struggle. And 
up ahead, Sheer Cape feels the presence of something and then notices Gut's violent emotions. She begins to think that there's no other way. She's going to cast a spell to seal the entrance to the cave. Ishidoro shouts, wait, wait, Guts is still down there. And Sheer Kate tells him that she knows, but with this many trolls, if they don't do something, they're going to raid another village. They just have to pray that Guts gets out of there before she can finish casting the spell. Back below, Selene plays with Guts' body, telling him, that's it. That's what she wanted. That hatred. That pain. Slane's tendrils wrap around and they pull back, ripping Guts' armor off, slicing into his skin. She holds him into the air, telling him, Go on, defy me, pierce me with your large sword, or is it even possible for a human? She licks the blood off of his face, stating that there's also another option. Use the behelot, make a sacrifice like him. Then something shoots through the air, knocking Guts out of her grasp. She says that that was rather ill-mannered, and behind her a shadow rises and the Skull Knight stares! She asks, why would he be trying to interrupt this intimate moment? Or is it that he'd like to join them? Your majesty. The Skull Knight asks, was it you who summoned me? And Slane says that she came here all by herself. She wanted to meet this boy. With the appearance of the fifth god hand, the worlds are already starting to merge, so who cares about the others? The Skull Knight tells her that they should stop this pointless chatter, and he draws his sword. Slane gets up stating that men are always so impatient, but it is also a woman's nature to savor the teasing. This is a place inside of her womb. Feel the rage, the violence, the spawn of darkness. Just then, the giant creatures begin to rise out of the bloody water surrounding the Skull Knight. More and more ogres come out, and as they attack, the Skull Knight rides up on one of the clubs, splitting the ogre's head in half. Faster than he rides, slicing and cutting through the other's heads, and like an impenetrable whirlwind, the Skull Knight's sword rips through everything in his path. But with more bodies that fall at his feet, the more that rise up to replace them. And Slane asks if he's enjoying himself, this womb of darkness, diseased souls that take form, the many children gushing forth. The Skull Knight stops and says, This is your chance. And Slane doesn't answer and sees Guts' fake arm rise up. The hand falls behind it, a cannon blast shoots out straight into Slane's stomach. Back at the cave's entrance, Ishidora holds off the trolls as they make their way out. But Ishidora shouts that he's on his last explosive, and just then a bolt is shot between his legs. He sees a troll wearing armor, holding a crossbow. He says that this should be easy. The armored troll grabs another troll and holds it in front, shielding himself. And Ishidora grits his teeth, asking what he should do. And that's when he looks at his dagger. The spirits begin to move along it, and he thinks back to how Morgan once protected him because he didn't do anything. The troll takes aim, and Ishidora's feet move like they have a mind of their own. The explosive is thrown, destroying the shield troll, and the bolt is released. Ishidoro tells himself, lower. I've got to aim lower. And with a quick dodge, Ishidoro jumps and rolls close to the troll, slashing away with Morgan's sword. While the troll is stunned, he then pulls out the dagger and stabs back, setting the troll on fire. Back in the lower level, Slane rubs around the gaping hole in her stomach and says, this feeling is so hot. The feeling which tears the body. But this is not enough. More, give her more. The Skull Knight's voice rings out to Guts, telling him not to waver. With that sword, it's possible. Take that sword and impale her. Guts gathers his strength and in a desperate an attempt to kill Slane, he thrusts the sword through her body. She looks down as she smiles, laughing at the blood pouring out from the wound. And she shouts, yes, you're splitting me in half. Life and death twisted together inside of her. She reaches down, kissing Guts, telling him that he is so wonderful. And that her body turns back to troll intestines. Guts asks if he did it, and Slane's voice tells him that they will meet again. And her laugh starts to fade away. There's a rumbling in the cavern, and soon all of the trolls and the ogres begin to melt, falling to the ground dead. Back at the entrance, the trolls begin to melt as well, and then everyone notices the spirit behind Shirke. Through Shirke, the spirit says that his name is the Rotting Root Lord, and with ordinance, with this small one before them, he shall turn these beasts that crawl along his body into the food for the maggots now rot. Down below, Shirke tells Guts that he needs to hurry, and he responds, telling her that he's kind of in the middle of something. The Skull Knight says that they must hurry. If we do nothing, then everything in the immediate vicinity will be swallowed up in the chaos. He looks at his sword, and he says, perhaps it's time to test my new blade. And he starts to push the blade back into his mouth. Thorny vines start to wrap around the hilt, and Guts says that this isn't the time for another magic trick. Then the blade begins to come back out, and Guts sees that it has faces, like little behelots. The Skull Knight holds out the sword, stating that he used the behelots taken from the Apostles and forged a new blade. Before Guts can even question it, the Skull Knight slashes into the ground, opening up a portal. Guts looks at the creatures and sees them falling into the spreading chaos, and then the hole is torn open. In a flash, Guts looks around and he finds himself standing with Shirke and the others at the entrance, asking, What the hell just happened? The Skull Knight says that they cut through space and escaped to a different lair. This is this sword's power. 
Guts looks back, telling him, I really don't care about that now. Why were you even down there to begin with? However, the Skull Knight's shadow begins to fade as he leaves without answering. Ichidoro shouts, asking, How did you get here? And Guts says that it looks like I owe him again. One of the children points to the trees and sees the spirits are leaving, and Shirake says that Quilfoth is sealed. Ichidoro says, That's awesome. Is this magic too? And Shirake says, Actually, she didn't do anything. As everyone hurries back to the village, Guts watches as Serpico greets everyone and then thinks back to his old companions in the old days. The image begins to shift, and he sees his new companions as they are, and thinks, who would have ever thought that he would ever have companions again? And that concludes Chapter 221 of Berserk. And you can follow us on Twitter at Mongastorian. I'll see you next time right here.